raining like crazy out there. Gonna fill our lake back up, I think. Brother, I forgot my water bottle and my cup. Could you go grab that out of my refrigerator drawer? Okay. Let's see. Tonight, December 14th, Wacken Atheist, Pseudo Professor Dave, the prize again. Son, if you'd learned to stick with mathematics or real science, we wouldn't have to whack you, but you need it again. Okay. Sweetly in Christian love. Okay. Today, December 14th, three more debates coming up uh, next uh, in a couple of weeks. Well, one with Kennedy, one with Evan. I don't know either of them, but uh, we'll try to straighten them out. Okay. Help us grow. Check out our channel. Give, tell your friends about us. They might save their, uh, change their life and their eternity. Mm -hmm. Come visit Dinosaur Adventureland. Gave tours today before the rain hit. We love it around here. But, uh, good work building stuff, and I'll keep giving the tours, right? Come for Christmas dinner. We got a real feast plan. All kinds of stuff for you to eat. It's all free. Spend the day. I'm going to take that one right there. Oh, yeah, man. Okay, let's see. Freddie and Mano and our cooks have been with us for, what, over six years. Amazing job. Everybody else is going to help. Well, come down. Genesis 1030, Genesis Baptist Church. Uh, then we have food, tours, games, set the record, take a nap, and our Christmas party. So if you want to come, stay, or stay for that December 25th. Bible says in six days the Lord made everything. Everything. We believe that's true. That means dinosaurs lived with man. And evolution is the dumbest and most dangerous religious cult in the history of the world. Never been a dumber idea. The fool said in his heart, there's no God. Anyway, take the tour. Oh, i got to add one. 252 baptized now so far. And to help us win souls, join our 777 club, drdino.com. You can click the button on there and help us win souls. Make any checks to CSE. If you can, give a dollar a day or a dollar a year or something. Help us keep going here, okay? Let's see. Get our video series. You can still get it in time for Christmas. Three sets for 100 bucks. Give to your friends or enemies. On, uh, get them straightened out. Let's see, get our woe series on the future. And okay, we had a problem with our excavator. Got stuck in the mud. Really, really stuck in the mud. Right there. Thank you, brother. Thank you, thank you. And then we sent the Kawasaki, the giant Kawasaki loader to go rescue it. And it got stuck in the mud. I got two bids of $10,000 to get them both out. Finally got a bid of $2,500 to get them out. Okay. Either way, we don't have either ten or $2,500. So. If you want to help, call 855-BIG-DINO. Uh, what do they call it? Extension 1 secretary, I guess. Yeah, okay. Or Randall, you do that? No. no. Okay, I don't either. <laughs> okay, join our uh, ministry. Come visit Dinosaur Adventure Land. It's fun. It's free. Dinosaur Adventure Land. Okay, tonight we're going to whack Professor Dave. Let me see. You. I did all this before. I sh it's been a busy day. Oh, I did all that. Let's see. It's in there twice. Never mind. Ignore this. Okay. Come visit Dinosaur Adventure Land right off I-65. Whack, whack, whack a Kent. Well, you go ahead, buddy. You bring your Patrick along and you t t debate me again anytime. Let's see. Where is, oh, no atheists are harmed, by the way, while we make the video of whacking them. I just do it for so much fun, trying to wake them up before it's too late. So, Professor Dave, where does he go? Right here. Uh, all right. The winner is Professor Dave. I said for the last time, for a while, well, that was a short while, two weeks. Damn. <clears throat> Somebody's got to get it. He said, so many things that are wrong, it needs to be corrected. I've been busy, and this is the easy topic for tonight. He made a video uh, recently, I think, I don't know, I don't keep track of all that, about uh, James Tour, who teaches in Houston. I called Dr. Tour today, asked him to be on tonight. He didn't want to, but uh, Dave thinks he's related to a strawberry. I, I believe him. Uh, let's see. Here is the video that he made about Professor James Tour, who's a young earth creator creationist, and they is talking, they've, they've been arguing about the origin of life. How did life get started? Claims. They've got all the science experiments to prove life could have made itself. Really. Let's let Dave talk here. If I got the right one, come over to here, click something. Hey, everyone. It's been quite some time since my two-part series demolishing every last one of James Ford's ridiculous talking points aimed at discrediting the entire field of origin of life research. But it seems like Jimbo didn't learn his lesson because he's been making a lot of noise on this topic as of late. Let's do a little recap. After my response, James must have been in a pretty dark place because his first move was to sanction this hit piece on me and pay to run it as an ad before my own videos debunking him. It was really pathetic. Of course, it's not running anymore. Lots of people caught it at the time and were quick to inform me of the hilarity. 
Instead of actually addressing my content and the 50 plus publications I reference, it just plays footage from a video freely available on my channel explaining my academic and professional background with cute little sound effects added to why that not having a doctorate or being a researcher somehow disqualifies me from explaining science. No, 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 Dave. You call yourself Professor Dave. Are you a professor? You don't have a doctor's degree. You're not a professor anywhere. Get a real name, okay? I dropped out in my second semester. I wanted to move up to San Francisco and play music. What's that called again? Oh, right, ad hominem, the thing he pretends I'm doing when I prove him wrong with facts. That's all you do, Dave, is ad hominem against me. Let's stick with truth and schedule a debate. Where is the evidence for evolution? There is none. All you have is ad hominem. Watch. Listen to, listen to, you call me a sleazy, what, uh, slimy car salesman and a tax protester. Dave, you're a liar and a hypocrite. You're the one doing the ad hominem. Anyway, go ahead, James. And this came along with a desperate ploy for a debate because that's totally what scientists do. Asking if you'd be willing to have, you know, a, a debate. We can do something here at the university. I'll get a lecture hall. I'd love to get together with him. We'll have a live stream. Now, of course, rather than contacting me directly with this idea, he chose to announce it on some loser nobody apologist and let it simmer. But even more hilarious is this absolutely transparent, good Christian spectacle. James tries so hard to appear like a nice, calm guy, when in actuality he's boiling with rage. But to some who put out YouTube videos, this is very, very simple. How do you just say synthesis? Show me. You got a reference on that? Do you have a reference on that? He seems like a fine young man. Oh, the two. I'll tell you what, Randall, go through some of Professor Dave's videos and find him ranting and raving over dumb stuff like this. We can put the whole, we can put an hour clip out on you, Dave, do the same thing. That, that's a distraction from the point, though. There is no evidence for how life got started without a designer. None. I'll show you in a minute, all right? Two faces of your typical Christian fundamentalist. Isn't everything you're doing right now, Dave, ad hominem against Professor Tour? Everything you're doing right now, right now. Listen to yourself, Dave. Listen. But ultimately, this clamor for debate is what creationist preachers do. Science is settled in the primary literature, an avenue James will never, ever take for this topic because he knows he's lying. It's desperate pageantry, grandstanding for his idiot followers who just want him to be right. Wait a minute. For his idiot followers. Is that an ad hominem, Dave? and won't lift a finger to learn enough to understand anything he's saying, let alone find the courage to watch a single second of my content exposing him. Much like this cackling moron from Jim's famous- There you go again. Who does the ad hominem, Dave? <laughs> sermon where he slandered Nobel Prize winner Jack Shostak. Nudged along by dynamic forces in the environment. Huh? <laughs> he's lying to you. You got an RNA nucleotide. But the problem is that's not a nucleotide. It's her own structure. This woman is the perfect representation of Tor's acolytes. She doesn't understand a word he's saying, but she loves every last drop. Now, you might... Wait, wait, wait. Dave, you're assuming everybody in that audience didn't understand a word he's saying and loved every last drop. You think you got a corner on science. You're the only one who understands any science, aren't you, Dave? You believe you came from a rock, for heaven's sake, and you're related to a strawberry. Dave, you don't understand science. But that's okay. We're going to help you tonight. Or try, okay? I think that behind the scenes, James was preparing a stunning rebuttal to my evisceration, biding his time until he was ready to speak again. What was his next move? Wow, look at this. A nine-hour course on abiogenesis. Abiogenesis is how life got started from non-living material. A bunch of chemicals in a warm little pond or something, Okay. Of course, this is just his pathetic 14-part series all lumped together in one agonizing dumpster fire of a single video. But hilariously, his followers don't notice at all and think it's new content. Here they are claiming James has done it again. You have to love the complete oblivion they display. We'll talk about oblivion in a minute, Dave. There is no possible way life got started without a designer. You're the one living in oblivion, Dave, but that's okay. Proving that they don't even watch his content, much less mine. But don't worry, he eventually got around to something new. Wow, what's this piece from October? We've been deceived. 
Dr. Tour exposes the false science behind origin of life research. Do you think he responds to anything I said to expose his lies? Let's take a peek. This is starting from the very first second of the video. Do you think you've been taught things? Things that aren't quite right? This whole thing about molecules in a puddle or in a pond, lightning strikes, molecules form. Those molecules form into slithering creatures and they come out of this pond. That's a primordial soup model. That's a bunch of nonsense. Yeah, this moronic straw man is what he chose to open with. He is making it abundantly clear who his audience is. Science illiterate creationist sheep. There you go. Dave, you don't have any proof for that at all. Why would you say such a thing? Dave, do you ever stop and think of what you say before you talk? Man, okay, now listen. He, he simplified what you guys really do believe. Life had to get started, crawled up out of the pond somehow, or maybe over millions of lots. Dave will add millions of years to solve the problem, okay, to hide it in obscurity. Watch, he's about to do it. James previously made nine hours of content pretending to pick apart the RNA world hypothesis as the cornerstone of origin of life research. So why would he open this sermon by insisting that the primordial soup model, which these days is something that pretty much only creationists say. It might be something only creationists say because your evolutionists realize that's all you got and it's dumb, real dumb. I'll show you dozens of articles, brand new articles are saying we came from the soup. How many have seen me show those before? It rained on the rocks for millions of years, turned them into soup, and the soup came alive. Yeah. You do believe that, Dave. I know you're embarrassed by that, and you should be, because it's stupid. Involves molecules in water struck by lightning, and then creatures slithering out. Why would he skip all of the complex chemistry he pretends only he understands, and the billion years of prokaryotic evolution, and further billion years of eukaryotic unicellular evolution. There you go. Where's the scientific evidence for either A? Would you all standing for truth and schedule a debate? Show me the scientific evidence for prokaryotic or eukaryotic evolution step by step. There is no evidence of any life forming in a warm little pond, and then of it ever changing to anything else. There's no evidence for this at all. You have a religion, Dave. You should admit it. But you added billions of years. That's your solution to everything. Bad time. And further quarter billion years of oceanic multicellular evolution and jump straight to slithering land creatures because he's a fraud. He is openly declaring that he is not interested in a real scientific conversation. Ad hominem, Dave. That's why this sermon is being given not in front of scientists or even science students, but a Christian ministry. You mean there's not allowed to be scientists or science students in a Christian ministry? Is that what you're implying, Dave? They're the only people ideologically motivated and willfully ignorant enough to lap up this trite. There you go. Assuming everybody in the audience is ignorant. Dave, go look in the mirror, son. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, Rachel Christie is a Christian ministry here that likes to tackle the big questions of life. Why are we here? Does God exist? Is the Bible true? That's right, the big questions, but only with speakers who tell them the answers they wanna hear. Uh, sorry, the lies they wanna hear. Oh, good. Well, James, if you're so open-minded, why don't you have me on your channel? Let me tell my side on your channel. You think they should, or, or do you only tell them the lies you want? Well, let's go, James. There's not a single person in the room who knows what you're talking about. Or there you go again. You, had, you didn't even see a picture of the crowd, let alone talk to the people in the crowd. You're the only one that knows what science is, aren't you, Dave? Oh, yeah. Or how you're lying to them, so the floor is yours. So when people say that Tour uses God of these arguments, or Tour has to bring God into this, or Tour has to bring in miracles into this, they're wrong. Whoa, easy, slugger. No one says you explicitly bring up God or religion when you talk about this topic. The point is that you lie about science because of your religion. That, Dave, that is, that is a lie. Show me where he lied. Show me where I have lied. I can show you where you have lied. You claim all kinds of things. You show the family trees of everything coming from a, a single-cell creature. That's a lie. That's not part of science. That's a religion, Dave. 
That's why you only talk in front of ultra-religious people, because they don't know you're lying and pretend that your lies embolden their faith. There you go, assuming everything about the audience, which you know nothing about. It's not any different on your channel, as pretty much every positive comment might as well be from the Jesus fan club. Importantly, whether you admit it or not, you absolutely do imply intelligent design at every turn. Dave, if I want you to explain this ink pen without using a man or a designer as your answer, what would you do? Could you give me a naturalistic explanation for an ink pen, Dave? How about a piece of paper? Pink. Can you give me a naturalistic? No, there's a designer of a piece of paper. There's no, there's no way to design life or this world without, no way to explain it without a designer. So you're implying that if somebody believes there's a designer, they're not intelligent. You're wrong. And I'll debate you anytime, anytime. Every time you say molecules never move towards life or nothing happens spontaneously, you are denying science and clearly invoking a design. Oh, so Dave, are you claiming that molecules move toward life? That I'll show you in a minute. You're lying, Dave. Which is the God you believe in. You believe so blindly that you can't even hear yourself talking, but continue. So if, if you think that I am being hard on people, trust me, I am an angel compared to the way that they treat me. Uh, me too, Dave. I'm, the way you guys what I, what I treat, treat, the way I treat you, it, nothing compared to all the atheists treat me. Randy, how many anti hoven websites are there and YouTube channels? And I got death threats today. I mean, today, I get, they hate me. That's okay. I'm bulletproof. I got angels protecting me. If God wants me out, he'll let me go. What are you going to do, threaten me with heaven? Ah. Oh, poor James. You lie through your teeth and slam at researchers, and then when you get exposed for it, you play the victim card. That's what you're going to do in a few minutes, Dave, when I tell you how you're lying through your teeth, okay? So there was a, there was a video put out a couple of years ago by Professor Dave, uh, uh, it was a guy named Dave Farina, and that has 786,000 views as of today. And it's, it's, he talks a lot about uh, my motivation for doing these things. I was psychoanalyzed, and uh, um, he knew things about me that I didn't even know about myself at all. <laughs> if you invested in some therapy, you'd stand to realizing that your entire public identity is lying for Jesus. Your entire... Ministry, Dave, or YouTube, is destroying people's faith in Jesus and lying about science. There is no scientific evidence for evolution, Dave. None. You lie about it. Okay? Stop. It's easy for me to see through you because I'm not brainwashed. Oh, you're the most brainwashed person in the discussion here, Dave. You believe you came from a rock and are related to a strawberry. Don't you? And so I came out with a 13-part series. It's actually 14 parts. This is a, one of the parts is A and B, but say a 13-part series on A-Bio. Yes, the train wreck I debunked to smithereens. You debunked the idea that you think abiogenesis, life can get started with, not, with no designer. And you debunked his, his theory. His theory is, must have been a designer. There's no other logical answer. I, I bet, I bet, where'd my pen go? I bet there was a designer for this key right here. I'd bet you... $8, that's all I got, that like, somebody designed that key. And so then he came out with a two-part series on me again. Now, these have got like almost nine, 800,000 views, 900,000 views. And, uh, and, and again, he says I'm still clueless. So we will address that, not so much tonight, but that will be addressed in due time. Oh, you can't address it tonight, not even a little bit. Your big superior brain can't refute any of the science I presented. You didn't present any science, Dave. You quote a bunch of science journals, everybody's saying, well, we're trying to make life, and we got this molecule to move this way. I'll show you. Okay. Even with over a year to reflect on it, that's a shame. So what are you even doing here? So it's because I have a day job that I can't just run in and, and, and make YouTube videos. And, and this is not easy, because I have to actually read papers and go through the data on the papers. Nobody is asking you to make YouTube videos, but... Nobody's asking you to make them either, Dave. Why do you do it? This is your whole income, isn't it? You actually have a day job? 
You do anything? Do I do anything around here besides make YouTube videos? Oh, yeah. Dave, this was a gravel pit with nothing here seven years ago. We have, what, 40 things now? We, we're busy around here. People visit all the time. I got a day job, Dave. What do you do? Buddy, you should publish papers. You know, that thing you brag about doing more than everybody else. No chance of that, though, huh? And do you read the abiogenesis papers? Do you really? Because there are about 50 I showed you in my response, clearly explaining systems chemistry, biogeochemistry, bio and so many don't understand. There you are, assuming he doesn't understand again. Dave, you're belittling him. You think you're superior, don't you? Well, I know you think you're real superior to me, so I challenge you to a debate on standing for truth or a neutral channel that will keep, all they, all they do is keep the time. You get half the time, you go first, you present your best evidence. I get half the time, no interrupting, no cursing and swearing, perfectly fair. Nobody can compl complain about the way they moderate fairly. So, Dave, I challenge you, where is the evidence for evolution? I want to see it. Which demolish your entire con. But of course, you don't have time for those papers, now do you? But we, he brought in, what was really good is he brought in three experts. And so now I can go after the experts because I'm not going after a YouTuber who it's very hard to engage. It's going like, you know, you put a hook in jello and it comes out. You, you, hook in jello? That's it you. It like you're trying really hard to pretend you don't have to respond to any of the science I showed you or acknowledge all the times I caught you quote mining, misrepresenting research, or just saying idiotic things that could be debunked by anyone who got a B in freshman year chemistry. Again, this word spontaneously here is a code word for we have no idea. This is not how soap works, as some have claimed. But when that enzyme degrades and proteins do degrade in water, you are desperately deflecting away from me because... Wait, wait, Dave. Do proteins degrade in water? Did life start in a warm little pond someplace where they, all the proteins got together? Answer his question, Dave. You're moving on to something else. Because I show the world how idiotic your script really is. Only two of those people on his that he brought on knew that they were being brought on. Uh, one of them didn't even know. Nope, that's a lie. All three knew. You're just lying, as usual. It's also a pointless lie, since everything they say proves you wrong either way. Are you going to start saying science things pretty soon? Well, I've been asking about that, and you, Dave. Where's the science? Well, I'll show you in a minute. The steps for evolution. Where did time, space, matter come from? How did life get started? Where'd all the stars and planets, where did energy come from? Where did the laws come from? I've asked these a bunch of times. You keep, you're running away. Rock, rock, rock. Go ahead. All right. Molecules don't care about life. Organisms care about life. Chemistry, on the contrary, is utterly indifferent to life. Without a biological entity acting on them, molecules have never been shown to move toward life. Never. Holy hell. This stuff again? James, what is the point of going up to a podium and pretending you have a leg to stand on when you just ignore the half hour I spent explaining the basics of systems chemistry to you? Remember autocatalysis, the work I showed you by Gerald Joyce, selection on the molecular level, the physicochemical continuum? You're just going to ignore all of that and stick to your old script, huh? Okay. Physical ke uh, chemical continuum. You just think it goes from chemistry, from basic molecules right up on into life, with billions of years. Okay, Dave, I'll show you briefly one point here tonight, and then we'll have to tackle you another night, give you, uh, let's see, where'd I go? Well, I got atheist, all right here, slide number 252. The origin of life, I have said for many years, the, the, the word evolution is a slippery word. It has at least six different levels or stages to it. Start off with cosmic evolution. Where did time come from? Where did space come from? Where did matter come from? Where did energy come from? Where did the laws come from? Then you have to have chemical evolution. You think the Big Bang produced hydrogen? Dave, you you, you're really good at teaching chemistry. Do you believe silver, platinum, and gold came from hydrogen and lithium gas? Hydro hydrogen and helium and lithium? Why don't you make some gold for me in the laboratory out of hydrogen, Dave? I'd like to see that. Nobody can do it. You say, well, it has to have a lot of pressure. Well, who made gravity? Who made the matter to produce this pressure? So you guys want to skip over these first three steps for sure. And your argument with James Tour is about number four, organic evolution, the origin of life. What is organic theory of evolution? Well, the theories of organic evolution explains convincing the, or convincing the origin of life. 
Oh, okay. Theory of organic evolution. How did life get started? A new theory of organic evolution. Oh, in nature.com. Let's see. Theories of organic evolution, organic evolution, or theory of organic evolution. Somehow, somewhere, life has to get started. I think we could all agree there are things that are alive on the earth. Could we all agree that, okay, how did it get started? I know you're related, you think you're related to a strawberry, Dave. I, I, I meant to bring a bowl of strawberries here. I was going to eat one of your grandparents right in front of you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Nobody knows how a mixture of lifeless chemicals spontaneously organize themselves into a living cell. And they'll quote and they'll quote, say, well, that's 20 years ago. Oh, you think it's better now, Dave? It's worse now. Primordial soup. Let's see. A term introduced by uh, uh, Oprin, a Soviet uh, uh, biologist, 1924. He proposed the theory of the origin of life uh, during the gradual chemical evolution of particles that contain carbon in the primordial soup. Oh, we came from the soup. Okay. Scientists create synthetic cell that grows and divides. Ah, 2021. That was just uh, last year, Dave. This was the first organism in the history of life on Earth to have an entirely synthetic genome. Whoa. They've been working to strip that organism down to its minimum genetic compound. Let's see. Hold it. Scientists created it. They've been working on it for a long time. They created it. It's got four base pairs. Huh. Let's see, the, the cell they created. I, they, listen, if a bunch of scientists have to create it in the laboratory, that's not evidence that happened by itself in the wild, is it? Huh. Let's see, scientists create artificial life. Scientists create artificial cell. Scientists create the first synthetic cell. Hmm. Many scientists believe RNA or something similar to RNA was the first molecule on Earth to self-replicate. Oh, RNA, ribonucleic acid. Let's see. So you think it started that way, don't you, Dave? Okay. Um, let's see. A major difference between DNA and RNA could explain why one is the go-to blueprint for life. Blueprint. Well, that's a word engineers use, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Primordial soup. Let's see. The origin of life. You have a better theory, Dave, other than the warm little pond? Primordial soup from Wikipedia. Uh, Robert Shapiro summarized the primordial soup. Early Earth had a chemically reducing atmosphere. Uh, why is that important, Dave? Can't have oxygen, can you? Because it'll oxidize whatever gets started. You know chemistry, Dave. Come on. Explain why you think it had a reducing atmosphere. Uh-huh. Oh, anyway, let's see. This atmosphere exposed to energy in various forms. Oh, where'd the energy come from? Where did energy come from? Where did matter come from? Where did time, space come from? Okay. These compounds accumulated in a soup, which may have been concentrated at various locations, shorelines, oceanic vents, etc. By further transformation, more complex organic polymers and ultimately life developed in the soup. This is the theory, Dave. Why can't we create life in a laboratory? Hmm, 10 years ago. Can't do it. Let's see. Miller-Urey experiment did this. No, it didn't. Miller-Urey experiment made a few compounds. It didn't make life. Fortunately for us, it would take a really, really, really long time. Ah, there you go. The God of the evolutionist. Add time. Always the answer. Sprinkle more time on it. How did that happen? Oh, billions of You said it yourself. Over billions of years. Billions of years. You said it three times in a row there, Dave. Dave, James Tour correctly pointed out that scientists have not created life in you said it's been quite some time since your two-part series demolishing every one of his arguments. You didn't demolish any of his arguments. You dazzled your audience, your non-scientific, non-thinking audience. How's it sound? How's it feel, Dave? Uh, and, and religious zealots who believe they came from a rock. Let me explain it in small words so maybe some of the evolutionist believers will get it. Okay, ready? I like to keep things simple. My mommy was a kindergarten teacher for years. My daddy was an engine. Keep it simple where people can understand. We'll avoid all the big words, Dave. Maybe you'll get some of this, okay? There's a dazzling variety of life forms on earth. How many would agree with that? There's a lot of different kinds of life forms, okay? Scientists have spent billions of dollars trying to copy what already exists. Like the guy in Washington claiming he found Zaire. The kid was never lost. He spent a year looking for Zaire. A kid who was never lost. <laughs> you want to copy what already, look, 
It's easy to explain life. It's already here. You don't have to make it in the laboratory. It's already here, Dave. Oh, we got some. We got some in our lake. I'll show you. Come on up. Okay. No scientists have come close to creating life. Not even close. Okay. If they did succeed in creating life, that would only prove it takes intelligence to create life. Wouldn't it? The belief that life formed by itself with no intelligent designer is purely religious as of now. You have to admit, if you're honest, right now, you, it is a belief. It's a religious belief that life formed without a God. Because you can't prove that. Okay? Number six. If people wish to continue to try to create life to support their religion, they should do it 100% at their expense in their own labs. Quit using government funding to try to push your religion. No government funding at any level should be used for this research. If you want to research the origin of life, go for it. I don't want to pay for it. I already know how it got here. Nobody else should be required to pay for research for your religion, Dave. Number eight, the belief that life forms spontaneously without any intelligent input should not be taught in any tax-supported schools at any level until it's proven with real science. Even if it's true, if it's true that life began without a designer, it's not scientifically proven yet, and it's a, you have to believe in that. So we shouldn't be, have, make everybody pay, have your religion taught, okay? Number nine, schools that teach this religious idea should be stripped of all government funding. All in favor say aye. Aye, aye. okay. Number 10, those who wish to continue this research looking for the origin of life should teach it to children, or teach it to children, should start their own private schools. Teach whatever you want, Dave. I don't want to pay for it. Come on now. Number 11. If someday someone does create life, replicating life in the lab, that still would not prove it did happen long ago and far away. If somebody did it in the lab, that wouldn't prove it happened in nature. Think about it, Dave. Talk to a freshman law student who's had one class in law. He'll say, yeah, he's right. Couldn't prove that. Okay. We already have a peer-reviewed document telling us how life began. Already got it. Really old document. Peer, never been proven wrong. God said, let the earth bring forth grass and herb yielding seed and fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. So the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed to tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself. And God saw that it was good. Well, there it is. It's already been demonstrated. God made all the plants. He's claiming he did. Let's see. Verse 20, 20. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open, open firmament of heaven. So God created great whales and every living creature that moveth. God's claiming he did it. Where did life come from? God did it. Okay. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth after his kind. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. Now David claimed, Dave claimed, he did not know what creepeth means. Didn't he? One of his, what is creepeth? Let me explain it to you, Dave. It's, it, it, Google it. It's not hard. G-O-O-G-L-E. Google. Okay. Let's see. Creepeth. Old English word. Let's see. The archaic third person singular simple present indicative form of creep. Oh. So creepeth uh, comes off the word creep. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So I Googled. Guess what? Creep. There it is right there. Creep. Okay. Let's see. Creep. Old English. To creep. To crawl. Oh, there's a clue. Ah. To twist. To creep. Let's see. Dutch. To creep or crawl. Ah. Swedish. To creep. Crawl. Icelandic. To stoop. Let's see. I Googled animals that creep. Dave, it's not hard. Okay, Google. Okay, uh, let's see. Photo of a creeping cheetah. Wow. A cougar, a creeping cougar. Let's see. A creeping sloth. Uh, three told sloth. Creeping animals. There we go. Creeping oh, caterpillar. Let's see. Ground squirrel creeping. Uh, much more information on a creeping animal. Are you, are, are, am I helping you understand, Dave, what creeping means? Watch this now. The creeping animals that live in these trees. Wow, okay. Let's see. Creeping cat. Uh-huh. 14 animals that definitely creep on you. My wife's dog. It done crept right over me. I'm done with that dumb thing, okay? 
Creeping, crawling creatures. Oh, Dave, this word is used quite a bit, okay? Creeping animals. Let's see. Boa constrictor, normal is creeping. Oh, they, they crawl on the ground. Oh. Creeping cat. There we go. Let's see. Creeping things. Uh -huh. Creeping snakes. They creep, Dave, okay? There's a cat creeping, okay? Here we go. Animals that creep on you. Creeping animals. Turtles creep. Uh, Who to thunk it? Centipedes creep. Der Derbyshire thief ridiculed for creeping up a driveway. <sighs> creeping. Let's see. God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing. And did I help you understand, Dave? means it crawls. We walk upright. Almost all the other animals, you know, bend over, crawl, four legs or, you know, creeping. Never mind. Okay. They were creep. They creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. So where did life come from? God did it. He explained it in the whole first, in the first chapter. I'll send you a copy of the book if you'd like one, Dave. Okay. Let me explain it in small words, okay? Maybe you'll get it, okay? We have a time-tested document, the Bible, that claims to be the Word of God, who created all life, claiming scores of times that God created life. This book claims quite a few times that God did it. Do you have any evidence that that's not true? You're going to keep looking for some way it could happen naturally? And if you did find a way it could happen in a warm little pond, that still wouldn't prove God didn't do it, would it, Dave? Ask a freshman law student. Actually, ask a seventh grader with an IQ that's even average. You say, yeah, he's right. Okay. That's the most logical conclusion anyone can reach. God had to do it. But the origin of life, like many things in the world, like the origin of time, space, matter, energy, laws, will probably remain outside the field of testable science. I don't think it's ever going to be provable scientifically, any of those. I think we're going to have to just take it by faith. And like you take evolution on faith. Number 15. The origin of life is only one of five major hurdles the evolutionists must overcome before they can claim their religion is part of science. Number one, the origin of time, space, matter. Big bang. You have no scientific evidence. You say, oh yeah, we see the stars giving a red shift. I would agree. That seems to indicate they're moving away. I think that's probably true, the Doppler effect, okay? So therefore, it all came from a dot. Is that your conclusion? If the stars are giving a red shift, maybe it's because they're moving away. Does that prove they've been moving away for billions of years? Could they have started, you know, yesterday or 100 years ago? Could they have started 6,000 years ago? This book says 17 times God made the earth first, and then he made the stars, and he stretched them out. Could, could that be? Can you prove that's wrong? That's what it claims. Because God stretched out the stars. Well, that would give them a red shift, wouldn't it? Without a big bang. Yeah, okay. Anyway. The origin of higher elements. How did all the elements come from hydrogen gas, Dave? Hydrogen, helium, lithium. How did this happen? Show me, explain chemical evolution. You're a good chemist. How do you get uh, plutonium from hydrogen? I want to see that. Let's see. The origin of stars. You have an explanation for where stars and planets came? I mean, a scientific, observable, testable, demonstrable, not a theory. Show it to me. That's science. The word science means knowledge. What do we know? comes from the Latin word seer. You've been whacked with this hammer enough. You might start to get the message, okay? <laughs> Knowledge, seer. What do we know? We know there are stars. We know they're giving a red, a red shift. We can infer from that they're moving away. That's as, far, that's as far as it goes. We know there's life on Earth, lots of different kinds of life. We know they make babies just like themselves, every kind, every time. Cows make baby cows without exception. Yeah. Randall, your dog had, your dog got, what did it have? Puppies. Are, are they all dog or did any, no cats came out or nothing? Okay. 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 Number, then number four, the one you and James too are arguing about, the origin of life. J David, this is only one of the major. What about, are you going to skip over the first three and just pretend? You're pretending number four happened. You showed a bunch of science journals of people trying to do this. If a bunch of smart men or, or women are able to make life, that doesn't prove your theory. Then you have to change from one kind to another. Nobody's ever seen any animal do that. That's why it's a religion. So Dave, if you wish to continue believing in the silly religion of evolution, please at least admit the truth that none of those first five steps of evolution are science. Those are not science, Dave. None of these are science. They're what you believe. Even if they're true, it's not science yet, hasn't been demonstrated. 
Okay? They've not, I want you to admit that scientists have not created life in the laboratory. Are you listening, Dave? You said that to James several times. Are you listening? Dave, are you listening? None of the first five are science. These five are all religious belief. You believe they happen. You don't have any science whatsoever for any of them. Now, number six, I think, is a bad word, microevolution. We shouldn't call it that. It's a variation within the kind, which God said would happen. They would bring forth after their kind. I wonder how many kinds of strawberries there are. And which one are you related to, Dave? I'm going to have to work on that one. Uh, I'll, I'll, try, I'll, try to, I'll try to trace down your ancestry for you, okay? All right. Questions or comments? Dave? You and James Tour continue all your stuff working on the, all the scientific evidence for and against abiogenesis. But this is just a tiny part of a much bigger problem that you don't even see. You will not even understand what I said tonight. Neither will your audience. But God is the only logical answer to the origin of time, space, matter, the origin of life, the origin of the planets, the origin of energy. There's no other logical answer. I've chosen to believe that. You've chosen to believe that God didn't do it. Okay. We'll see how that works out for you, Judgment Day. Any questions or comments, Randall? Uh, not relevant. Not relevant. Okay. We get that all the time. So, Dave, open challenge once again. If, if I will send you a copy of a Bible, I don't know where to send it. Uh, if I send it to YouTube, the postman's going to laugh at, me, uh, laugh at me. So give me an address to send it, and we'll send you a Bible. I'll send you some of my some videotapes, and I'll debate you anytime. You can come visit Dinosaur Adventureland. I'll give you the tour myself. Please do. I'm praying for you. I do pray for you. But I'm concerned you are not only lost, you're destroying other people's faith, Dave. If you want to go to hell, that's your business. You want to drag others with you, I think that's, I think I got to try to stop that. Amen. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any more? Thank you. Thank you. No walk tonight. It's raining out there. See you tomorrow.